bless you take your seat good morning everyone greetings from jesus the head of the church i'm from our senior pastor pastor tom and pastor Evelyn brisby um so much to share this morning i will trust that the lord will show us mercy and the lord will help us can you tell somebody close to you it's good to see you in church hallelujah <laughs> Tell the person, thank God that you are not in the mortuary, but you are in the sanctuary. You know, some people that seemingly look better than us, richer than us, more educated than us, more healthier than us, some of them are in the mortuary now. But glory to God that we are in the sanctuary. Praise God. This morning, multimedia, you are preaching with me this morning. You want to prepare for us extra chapter 8. And um, <laughs> glory to God. We are sharing this morning on... Let's go, go back to the slide, please. We are sharing this morning on the blessedness of a proclaimed fast. Blessedness of a proclaimed fast. We've been fasting. Today is day 7 been having a 10-day fast, a proclaimed fast by a general overseer. And uh, I was thinking I'm going to be talking something on learning from Christ today, talking about man as a practitioner of wisdom and man as a presence of God creature. But somehow the Lord began to impress in my heart that no, um, we should share on how we can have a valued based fasting life. Because this is not the only time we are going to fast. I believe that as a child of God in your routine, once and again, you always wait upon the Lord. So the idea of this teaching is not just to give us fish, it's to teach us how to fish. That whenever you are waiting upon the Lord, you know what to do. So that you can be able to assess all the benefits that God has packaged for you and me in redemption through the fasting exercise. I'll be reading from Extra chapter 8, verse 21 to 23, and also Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. It's going to be our key scripture. Now, Extra, um, just to give us a very quick context, is just an historical, um, an historical documentation of how God was working with three major leaders, Zerubbabel, Ezra, and Nehemiah. You know, in Jeremiah chapter 25, the children of Israel has gone into captivity. Nebuchadnezzar came and carried them to become captives. And now they were going back home. And they went back home in phases. The first phase came through the man Zerubbabel. And Zerubbabel had the commission to build the temple. Ezra was another leader that God raised to take some group of Jew um, people from some Jewish people back to the land and his own commission was to build the community when Nehemiah's own commission was to build the broken walls of Jerusalem and so as Ezra was taking the people back there were some bandits on the way he was on a journey and he was called to build every one of us seated this morning watching online you're on a journey. You're on the journey of destiny. You're on the journey of life. And God has called you to build. Some of us are called to build a family. Some of us are called to build a ministry. Some of us are called to build a business. Some of us are called to build a generation. And so that was the commission that was upon this man, Esther. I mean, this man, Ezra. And we want to see the wisdom that Ezra applied to be able to fulfill his destiny as it were. Then I proclaim a fast, and I'm carrying the people at the river of Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before our God. So fasting is not, fasting cannot change God. Remember the book of Malachi, it said, I am the Lord, I change it not. The idea of fasting is to change you and me, so that our flesh will be subdued and our spirit man can assess the fullness of God. Is it to seek of him a right way for us? 
That's one of the ways you can seek the right way. And for our little ones, the fasting is not just only for you. God intend that the fasting, you know, just as we have generational causes, we also have generational blessing. You can become the pioneer, the patriarch, and the matriarch in your family to, to chart a new course for your generation by the altar of fasting. He said, for I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and all men to help us against the enemy in the way. There's always enemy in the way. I say, because we have spoken unto the king, saying, the hand of our God is upon all for them that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. Can you give us verse 23 very quickly, sir? Verse 23. He says, so we fasted and besought our God. And he was entreated of us. Let's go to Matthew Gospel very quickly. And we are going to run. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then this is Jesus, the greatest destiny that landed the planet. Was led up of the spirits into the wilderness. To be tempted of the devil. When he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward an hunger. We can go back to the slide. Praise God. Praise God. You know, our ultimate destiny is to make heaven at the end of our journey. Uh, Paul was writing in 1 Corinthians is it 15 and verse 19? He said, if only in this world you have hope, you are going to be of all men most miserable. So, your destination at the end of the day, God's plan for you and me is that we'll make heaven and we'll spend eternity with him. But before we go to heaven, we also have an earthly destiny between here and heaven there is something God has called you and me to do and our earthly destiny is that we will become like the Christ that is God's intention for us that is God's objectivity for you and me fine you are born again you are going to make heaven at the end of your journey, if you continually to, if you continually live a righteous life, but before you get to heaven, there is something I want you to do here, and that thing is that we are supposed to become like the Christ. We are supposed to have the character of the Christ, the competence of the Christ, and also the command of the Christ. People should look at your environment and look at you and say, "This is Jesus." The Bible says that to them whom he had foreknown, the Bible says he has predestinated. And the people whom he has predestinated, he has called. And those whom he has called, he has glorified. Why? So that they will be conformed to the image of his son. Paul was writing in 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18. He said, he said, he said as we behold in the glass the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image. From glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Paul said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. So whenever God look at you and me, eh, the parameter by which God weigh your life and my life, how am I becoming like the Christ? How am I having the character of the Christ? How am I having the competence of the Christ and also the command of the Christ? And we all know Jesus was in command. He was in command because he was a man full of grace and he was a man under the government of the God of heaven. And you see, it is wisdom for you and me to look at the master to say how did he fulfill his destiny? How did he prosecute his own destiny? Because we know the destiny he has was to go and satisfy the claims of divine justice. So that eternal redemption will become not just a possibility but a reality to as many that call upon his name. How did he do it? 
In Acts chapter 1 and verse 1, he said, Oh, the former treaties have I made unto the old Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. So when you look at the life of Jesus, sometimes some things he will say to them, some things you will learn by observation as you go through the scriptures as a child of God. And one of the disciplines of Jesus, he was a man that was committed to fasting. It was a man that was living the fasted life. According to the man of blessed memory, Kenneth E. Hagin, Jesus Christ modeled the fasted life. It was a man that was always waiting upon the Lord. It was a man that was always waiting upon the Lord. And that is the reason why fasting becomes very important for you and me. In fact, Jesus Christ said that when he was with them, because heaven was with them, when Jesus was with them physically on the earth walk, and the people of John the Baptist came and said, ah, why your disciples are not fasting? And all, He said, no, they can't fast now. But until the bridegroom is taken away, he said, then shall they fast. Paul was writing to the church in Corinthians. He said, I was in fasting often. The prophets of old, the saints of old, that was their discipline. That was their practice. So that they can be able to put the flesh under and make their spirit to be sensitive to decode and to download the values, the virtues, and the voices of heaven for them to be able to fulfill their destiny. So fasting becomes very important and it's not negotiable for the new Christian saints. What is fasting? I know we have a lot of definition about fasting, but I want you to take this definition home today. Fasting simply means two things. It means to abstain in order to abide. You know, a lot of Christians go through hunger strike. They are not eating. They are not drinking. They are not having other things. But they are not abiding. The issue of fasting is not just the abstinence, it is the abiding. I'm talking about abiding in the place of prayer, abiding in the place of meditation, abiding in the place of seeking the face of the Lord. Remember the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 1, that they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They will do the natural things supernaturally, and they will do the supernatural things naturally. They shall run, they shall not be weary, they shall walk, and they shall not faint. The word wait there, in the original Greek, is the word kava. It means to join something by twisting. To join something by twisting. I know some of our wonderful sisters here, they have bread. You know, when you are braiding hair, what do you call Is it braid or plate or twist? When you twist hair. So when you are waiting upon the Lord, it means you are twisting yourself with the Lord. That's what that means. So you don't come and tell me, oh, bro, I've been waiting for 10 days. You have not eaten. But what is your prayer quotient? So the main thing is not the abstinence. The main thing is the consecration to abiding. There are about seven types of fasting in scripture. And that is not the meat of the message today. We're going to be going on how we can derive the value from our fasting. And maybe I will just mention that very quickly. Number one, there is the personification fast. I, I suggest you just take a picture of this and do your own Bible study. The personification fast is the fast that when you begin to abstain from things that make your life to be out of balance. I know it's an area of social media, area of television podcasts and YouTube and magazines, anything that consumes your time, anything, Paul said, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Other version will say not all things are beneficial. Sometimes God will want you to close your Facebook page. Sometimes God will want you not to look at the, the, the TikTok or the YouTube video or the Instagram. If that thing is taking more of your time, it's a type of fasting. Paul said, I put my body under subjection. And the reason why you are abstaining is because you want to seek God. Am I together? Are we together this morning? Another type of fasting is the partner's fast. The partner's fast is the fast that is between the husband and the wife. It has to be done when sometimes there is a need for separation for physical intimacy. It has to be under the confine of marriage. Scripture says it has to be with consent for a season. 
so that you can go seek the Lord. There's the Passover fast, there's the Daniel fast. The reason why it's called Passover, you can see there because it was three days before Passover. Well, you are just on light meal because you want to seek the Lord. There's the partial fast, there's the proper fast. You can do your own Bible study on all these. But the main thing about fasting is that we're able to separate ourselves, we're able to seclude ourselves so that our heart, we can seek the face of our God. Please, multimedia, kindly give us Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 5. Let's get the meat of the message. We're going to be continuing this teaching in the second service. So I want to encourage you, we can't finish it in the first service. We'll continue in the second service. I want to encourage you, uh, if you can, to listen uh, while we um, learn from the Lord. Let's, from this scripture, I want to present to us four ways by which we can maximize our fasting. Four ways by which we can derive value and draw the juice of heaven concerning our fasting. In fact, Isaiah 58 is the fasting scripture. I will encourage you to read that. You see, is it such a fast that I have chosen? So number one, there should be a purpose while you are fasting. There should be a purpose. I call it, you need to seek a blessing. And when we are talking about the blessing, you know, a lot of people look at the blessing as only the physical things. Blessing is far, far more than that. If I share with us about 10 things, 10, 10 power, 10, okay, I think we'll get there. We'll get there very quickly. So, is it the fast that I've chosen? So, no more, you must, and this blessing, sometimes it could be God that will put it in your heart. Brother Tony, I want to take you to a new level, and I want you to be on a fast. Sometimes you are the one that will bring the reason to God. I'm not happy about this situation. I'm not happy about this circumstance. I'm not comfortable with this condition. And you go before the Lord. Because sometimes God will not come to you. You are the one that will need to go to him. Like the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus did not come to her. The Bible says she said in her heart... I was telling them in the whole night, that is a Lambano experience. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Sometimes there is, there is even no clear reason. That one is, a, is, 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 a, is another level where God tells you to embark on a fast without a reason. Sometimes he doesn't give you the reason immediately. As you obey, God meets you in the point of obedience and open your eyes to see. I have stories about that, but because of time. Now we must under, he said, is this such a father that I, so number one, you must desire a blessing. Number two, for that a, that a day for a man to afflict his soul. Number two things you need when you are fasting is brokenness. And I'll be teaching on brokenness on the, maybe by the grace of God in the second service. Brokenness. You need to be broken before the Lord. The Bible says that for a man to afflict his soul, Number three, is it to bow down his head as the bulrush? That's talking about the, 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 the posture of prayer. The time of fasting, number three, is a time of bowing. Is it, if there is time, we'll teach about that in the second service. It's a time of bowing. It says, and to spread sackcloth and arches under him, will thou call this the fast? An acceptable day of the Lord. I want you to underline the word sackcloth. You know, sackcloth is one of the attire of mourning. And if you do a research on that word, sackcloth, it's gotten from, in fact, the Hebrew word is the word sack, S-A-K. It's a, a kind of bag that is used to gather grains in the Old Testament. Do you remember in the book of Genesis, I think was it chapter 42 or 45, when Joseph puts his cup in one of the sack of his brother Benjamin? Do we remember? It is the same word there. So those days, if people are mourning, instead of them to wear the normal attire, they go take, because they were used to, it was an agricultural economy, and they were also into animal husbandry, they go take the sack that they used to gather grace to make clothes. 
That is, a, that, that is an outward show in the old covenant that that person is, is, uh, is in a state of brokenness. Is in a state of mourning. And you know in the scripture, sack, I'm rather grain is a type of the word of God. Jesus was speaking in the parable of the sower. He said the seed is the word of God. So that means you need Bible during the time of your fasting. Let's go back to the slide very quickly and let's round off this first service. Hallelujah. We're continuing the second service. Let's round off this first service. Hallelujah. So number one, for you to maximize your fast, you need to desire a blessing. You need to know, you need to define, you need to choose the reason why you are fasting. Like for this fasting we are having as a church, which is a proclaimed fast, there are two main reasons. The reason is there is a, there is a, a prayer for mercy and a prayer for revival. Don't just fast without the purpose. You must have a reason. You must have something that you are... In fact, my suggestion, whenever you are fasting, especially if you are going on a protracted fasting, take one issue per week. I'm telling us the truth. If you make up your mind that this July, I want to settle the issue of my career. And take one week. Don't pray any prayer. Don't pray many prayer. Lord, show me mercy concerning my career. If your issue is your marriage, this marriage matter. You know, there's a level you pray to, the answer has not come to your hand physically, but it has come to your heart. How many of you have been there? You know that this matter is already settled. You need to take at least one major issue. You need to desire a blessing. Number two, you need to be broken. I'm going to teach on that in the, in the second service. You also need to bow before the Lord. I'm going to tell us some things on how you can be broken. And lastly, you also need the Bible. A lot of people, you need to have, you know, you know, in this fast, we are fasting for these 10 days. I have about 275 scriptures to meditate on. Personally, on, on mercy and on revival. Because in that point of meditation, God begin to give you disclosures and begin to open you up to the blessings of God. It's time to pray, but we are not even done with the first service. But let, let's just run through. Let's go. Let, let's, let's, let's take two minutes, please. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 58 from verse 8 to 14. I want to show us about 10 things you are supposed to desire when you are fasting. Isaiah chapter 58. Oh, I can't see very well from. It said, then shall the light. Thank you. No, that's okay, sir. Okay, just go verse, verse by verse. Verse by verse. Hallelujah. Then shall the light break forth as the morning. Number one, anytime you are fasting, I want you to desire supernatural illumination. Sometimes in the dreams of the night, God will give you instructions. You also need to desire supernatural, there are about ten of them. Supernatural illumination, supernatural influence, supernatural intervention, Supernatural impactation, supernatural interception, supernatural intersection. Sometimes God will want you to pray for your generation. If you read the verse there, it says, was it verse 11? It said, they shall raise up the foundations of many generations and they shall be called the repairer of the bridge. Just like some people's parents do some things that cause a kind of uh, a cause in the family. You also can do something and raise up an altar that can cause a blessing for your generation to call. I pray that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. He said, and satisfy thy soul in drought and make far thy bow supernatural provision and thou shalt be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose water fail not. But can you give us verse 12 or verse 14? Let's round off with verse 14. And you go back to the slide. Then shall thou delight thyself in the Lord. And I will supernatural lift him. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. And I will feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. With the heritage of Israel thy father. For the mouth of the Lord. Let's go back to the slide. I've spoken it. Somebody is entering a new level after now. In the precious name of Jesus. If you want to take a picture? These are about seven things. About, rather about nine to ten things. You can get from the Lord when you are fasting. It's a time where God will impact. 
impact your spirit. God can give you instructions in the dreams of the night. God can even bring interception. Whatever the devil is planning against your life, it can be intercepted in the altar of prayer and fasting. I'm believing that the Lord will help somebody. Can we stand to our feet? I decree that upon your life, this second half of the year, you will experience supernatural progress in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every time you wait upon the Lord and fasting, it will be beneficial for you. Everyone in this service, I decree that God will help you. You will experience supernatural intervention. Every weakness is giving way to strength. The second half of this year, I prophesy to somebody, it will be better than the first half. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, somebody is crossing the line. You're overcoming the barrier. You are raising up the foundations of many generations. You are building an altar that will speak for, that, 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 that will speak for generational blessings to your family. Wherever you are, you want to lift up your two hands to heaven. And I want you to begin to pray in the spirit. If the instrumentalist will help us, that will be fine. Let's take two minutes and begin to appropriate these blessings in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Men shall call me. I shall be filled with the heritage of Jacob. When men are cast down, I will say there is a lifting up. You want to lift up your voice and pray in the spirit everyone this morning in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. You want to receive grace from God. You want to obtain mercy from God. You want to obtain grace from God. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. He said, and of Nephtali, let Nephtali be satisfied with favor. Let him be full of the blessings of the Lord in the days when the secret of God is upon my tabernacle and when by his light I walk through the darkness. Somebody is walking through the darkness. You're overcoming the barrier. You're overcoming all the obstacles. God is turning every obstacle to miracle for you. The Lord is giving somebody direction. God is showing you the way to take. Every confusion is giving way. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, if you have any pain in your body, the power of God is here already. Lay your hands upon yourself right now. Lord, everyone that has any form of pain, pain in the teeth, pain in the eyes, pain in the head, pain in the chest, pain in the back, pain in the leg, pain in any part of the body, I decree that you are free by the power of God under this unction flowing in this service. You are healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that every one of us, we will make heaven at the end of our journey. Let's put our hand together for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.